ان الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي all praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator of the universe and peace and blessing of Allah be upon prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and all those who follow him till the day of judgment also pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah give us sincere iman sound health and everlasting halal wealth Amen. these are the three gifts if somebody is blessed with this he has acquired the whole world hadith in sunan ibn majah sincere iman sound health and everlasting halal wealth this will be the question again to get that other gift three best gifts from sunan ibn majah rasul sallallahu has said the one who has got sincere iman sound health and everlasting halal wealth he has acquired the whole world and the hadith the specific word of the hadith is that when a person wakes up he is sound in his health <coughs> not waking up with the paracetamol and ibuprofen and all this and that so he wakes up with a sound health and peace in his neighbor no war and he has got a meal of a day kuta yomi prophet the son said he is the most richest person he has achieved the whole world so this is <coughs> you have to remember that sound health peace in neighbor and meal of a day okay now so far what we have covered that when the child is born and then he lives in this dunya and he lives like a good person and a bad person and he ends up at the time of the death and the time when the soul is coming out this is what he is is reacting now after the soul is gone when the soul is going to taken out there are some mashallah guidance from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as from rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that is the main part of our lecture today the word barzakh is mentioned in two places in the quran and one is mentioned as a barrier general barrier and the second one is the period of a person after his death till the day of judgment that life is called life of barzakh and these two are mentioned in the quran we can give you this now if somebody remembers in my previous talk i have quoted one verse from the quran which is uh, which speaks about uh, the life of barzakh when your rose gone the barzakh start yeah but i want the dalil the ayah from the quran i am not a <laughs> i want the dalil There's a, there's a, there was a verse I quoted from the Quran, and I won't take from you because you were noting down. <laughs> so I won't take from you now. I know you were very punctual. When I used to read the ayah, when I used to say the name and the number, you were noting it down. I know, but not from you. Okay, I'll give you the hint. Surah Al-Mu'minun. Now let's let's see the ayah. Two verses. Even the translation. Yeah. Sorry, ninety nine and hundred. So that is the ayah where the word bazaar is used, which I will inshallah read to you now, and. The barzakh is also used in Surah Al-Rahman. And in Surah Al-Rahman verses 19 and 20 where Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, "Maraj al-bahrayn yaltaqiyan baynahuma barzakh la yaqiyan." That there are two rivers when they meet together, two seas. Between them is a barrier which stops them from meeting each other. So the word barzakh is also meant as barrier. 
and that word barza can also be used for the barza in the you know the life that is the life of this and the life of the jannah and jahannam in between that is called barrier and that barrier is barza but that barrier is not like dead thing it is in a life there's a proper life in the barza which today inshallah we will cover it's very important so the first thing is the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said which inshallah i will quote you from sahih bukhari and sahih muslim and this hadith is very important for every muslim to you know understand the proper understanding because it gives you all the if you pay attention to what i'm going to explain to you now in this hadith it will i inshallah cover all your questions which normally people have about the uh, you know life of barzakh this is before the person is dying and before he is buried this hadith is found in you can make the note of that very important this hadith is found in five different classical books in sahih al bukhari in the book of janaiz in sahih muslim again the the book of jannah and his attributes in sunan an nasai it is found in kitab al janaiz in sunan abu dawud kitab al janaiz and musnad imam ahmad so five books in sahih al bukhari if you are know, making the note of that then the hadith number is 1252 in sahih muslim 5011 5115 uh, 5116 in sunan nasai it is 2022 2023 2024 sunan abu dawud 2812 and also in kitab al sunna of abu dawud 4126 and musnad imam ahmad uh, in the musnad of anas ibn malik hadith 11823 and this hadith covers two main parts of our aqeedah this hadith covers two main parts of our aqeedah because hadith should be learned in the same way that how it helps with our aqeedah number one it helps with our iman number two it helps us to prepare for our akhirah for worship worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so let's read the hadith now and always even if you follow my series of a 40 hadith of imam an-nawawi on my channel when i'm teaching each and every hadith each video has got one hadith and what i'm asking the students to focus on the text of the hadith because when you go for the interpretation many scholars will give you different interpretations some are more in detail some are less in detail, you know explanation but if you focus on the text of the hadith of 40 hadith you will understand you know better when you read the interpretation as well so this hadith first let me read it to you in arabic rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying it is reported by anas ibn malik anas ibn malik radhiyallahu anhu qaal al abdu idha wudi'a fi qabrihi wa tawalliya wa dhahaba ashabu hatta innahu la yasma'u qar'an ya'alihim atahu malakan fa aqadahu fa yaqulan له ما كنت تقول في هذا الرجل محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فيقول اشهد انه عبد الله ورسوله فيقال انظر الى مقعدك من النار ابدلك الله به مقعدا من الجنه قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيراهما جميعا واما الكافر او المنافق فيقول لا ادري كنت اقول ما يقول الناس فيقال لا دريت ولا تليت ثم يضرب بمطرقه من حديد ضربه بين اذنيه فيسيح صيحه يسمعها من يليه الا الثقلين الله اكبر let me read arabic and then translation will be easy directly i can't just you know to rely on the translation he says anas ibn malik is the narrator he might put you the question that the hadith who is that rawi who is the sahabi who is narrating this so the rawi is anas ibn malik 
who narrates from Rasulullah Sallam. And the Sanat is Rabi, which is uh, Anas, and the Matan is the text of Rasulullah Sallam. And Rasulullah Sallam is saying, Al Abdu ila wudi'a fi qabrihi. The time when the servant of Allah, the slave of Allah, is put into the grave. وَتُوِلِّيَا وَذَهَبَ أَصْحَابُهُ حَتَّى إِنَّهُ لَيَسْمَعُ قَرَعَ نِعَلَيْهِمْ When the people have put him in the grave and they moved and they stepped away or went back with their steps, this person, the person who is put into the grave, he will make to hear لَيَسْمَعُ Indeed he is hearing he would hear the footsteps of the people going away from him. And in some narration it says, when they move 40 steps away from the grave. Now pay attention, we are just understanding as a normal person buried in the grave. But this can also be a person who was like, you know, flying in the aeroplane and it got fire and it became ashes. So nothing happens to the so very good. Who said that? Zakallah Khairan. So it is, you know, it is four words, but four letters, but it's very important. This is the main subject. So always focus that we are talking about the soul. So this person, when he is buried and people have moved away from him, he could still hear the footsteps of the people. Atahu Malakan. Then the two angels, they come. If you study in Mishkat al Masabih, very classical book of Hadith, in the book of Janais, you will find that it is more detailed that two angels are coming. Who are those two angels? Their dress is also described. Their name is also described. Munkar and Nakir. And their dress is like horrifying dress. It's like a very, very fearful dress because they are coming into the grave and another hadith says that the person's body is meant to sit. So the person is meant to sit in the grave and his ruh is sent back to him. His soul is sent back to him or her and he is meant to sit there. They make him sit. They ask him. مَا كُنْتَ تَقُولُ فِي هَذَا الرَّجُولِ مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم See the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is again, as I said, this hadith speaks about the aqeedah. In my masjid, since eight years, the two, minimum two scholars from Christianity, they are like, you know, the speakers and missionaries from their churches. They come for, since eight years they are in my masjid. Jummah Masjid, Jummah Prayer, from the Adhan till I finish my khutbah, till I finish my salah, and then I discuss question answers with the audience, and then I sit with them. Since eight years, unless they have their own other activities, otherwise they have never missed any Jummah. But according to their belief, they say that why Allah has given, uh, well, why Allah has taken the life of Jesus, according to them, they say this father has taken the life of his beloved son is because God wanted us to be perfect and nobody can achieve perfection in this world. So the sacrifice of an innocent child is needed. And that will, you know, make all, all, all the humanity perfect in their sins because they are all sin, sinful people. And they refer to the sin of Adam al-Islam when he disobeyed Allah and ate the fruit of the tree. But look, our Allah is different than their Allah. So that's why I'm telling you the Aqeedah here. According to them, Allah wants people to be perfect. And for that, nobody will achieve the perfection. So somebody has to die for that. Now just imagine, if you are in this academic education system, if the British Board Education, Board of Education, if they set up the GCSE papers and the paper is meant for the students to fail, but the demand is they have to pass. 
So who is doing the zulm? The board is doing the zulm. The paper is set to in such a way that nobody will pass. And the demand is? So now Allah according to them, God is saying that you all have to be perfect. And He knows that nobody will be perfect. Now so He is giving us the wrong solution that I have to kill my son. My son has to die for your people. You will not pass. So don't you think this demand itself is wrong? But look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Allah wants us to be successful. وَلَا يَعْضَ لِعِبَادِهِ الْكُفْرِ وَلَا يَعْضَ لِعِبَادِهِ الْكُفْرِ Surah Zumar, chapter 39. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made, made this uh, fundamental law that Allah does not want anybody to be kafir. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And second thing, Allah wants all of us to pass the exam. And what is the dalil for that? The question paper is given to us before our death. So that we can easily prepare the question paper. You are not getting my point. Only three questions that you have to answer and you, if you know the three questions, you can prepare it. And if you are preparing it, you will easily and this is the uh, questions given to you in advance. So you can't come on the day. Uh, so, if I tell you tomorrow you have the exam and this is the question paper. So don't, don't worry, you can just <laughs> prepare this question paper and come give the exam. Now all of you will pass or not? Yes, because the exam, so this is what the exam is. Allah is going to ask us three questions and the questions are already given to us. So the when angels are coming, they are not bringing to you those questions which you don't know and not those questions which you will ever pass. Are you getting my point? So this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But unfortunately, there will be still some people knowing these questions, but still they will not Pass and they will not prepare. Allah Akbar. Look, it says that the two angels they come, they make him sit, and then they ask him the first question. Ma kunta tapulu? Another ahadith says, Man rabbu kawa ma dinu kawa ma tapulu an hadha rajul. Who is your Lord? What is your deen? And what do you know about this man? So here Imam Bukhari uh, has brought this a short version, but as I said, these are five classical books. With different numbers are there, so that means that the whole narration is that they are asked, the person in the grave is asked three questions. Who is your Lord? And what is your religion? And what do you say about Prophet Muhammad Now the person will give the answer that my Lord is Rabbi Allah, Allah is my Lord, Dini Al-Islam, and he will say he is Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the messenger of Allah. Rasulullah. In this word it says, Ashadu Allahu Abdullah wa Rasul. I witness that he is the servant of Allah and is the messenger of Allah. Then angel is showing him, Fayuqalu Umdur, it will be said to this man, Umdur ila maqadika min al nar. Look on the left side of yours. There is a seat. This seat is made for from the hellfire that was actually for you. أَبْدَ لَكَ اللَّهُ أَبْدَ لَكَ اللَّهُ بِهِ مَقْعَدًا مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ Allah has changed this seat from the hellfire to the jannah. Mm -hmm. Sit in the jannah for you because you gave the answer. Subhanallah. See, the result has also come up. We wish we get the GCAC papers like that. <laughs> then it comes to, it says, the Nabi is saying, فَيَرَاهُمَا جَمِيعًا Then Allah will show him both the seats. He will see the seat in the Jannah and he will see the seat in the Jahannam. And Alhamdulillah, he will be thankful and he will see that. Then more things are coming about the life of Barzai. وَأَمَّا الْكَافِرُ The disbeliever. Here the word kafir does not mean the who has rejected Allah SWT. Here also the one who rejects Allah's favors. Because there are so many favors, you know, we have, but we don't appreciate that. So here, but because the word munafik is coming, so the scholars are very strict about this. 
Here it means kafir who does not say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And the munafiq, munafiq who does not, you know, believe the faith in his heart, he was only Muslim by his words. Fayaqul, when he, this question will be asked to him, he will say, la adri, I don't know. Kuntu aqulu ma yaqulu nas. I used to say what the people are say, used to say. Now pay attention to this. It's very, very important for us to know this because today our deen is all based on the mobile and Google, share Google. But in reality, if, if we are asked by the non-Muslims anything about our religion, we are lost. And this is the reason that many girls in the schools, in high schools, they change their religion and they hide from their parents. Many boys, they change their religion and they hide from their parents. Many people, they change their religion in their families and they hide the religion and they from their parents because they don't want to tell because these are the doubts which they have in their minds and they don't know. So this, this point, remember this point here, it says that when the question will be asked, he will say, I don't know, I used to hear from the people. Pay attention to this. It will be said that you did not know or you did not study. Then uh, uh, metal, iron, uh, hammer will be brought and it will be hit on his, uh, you know, it will be hit on in between the two ears. It, is, it means this part. Between the two ears, this part the hammer of the man, the iron hammer will be hit on his head. Fayasihu, so he will scream, he will shout. Sayhatan, the scream will be so loud, so loud. Yes, ma'uha mayyali. It will be heard by everyone on the face of the earth. Everyone. Illa thaqalain, except insan and jinn. And the reason is also mentioned in the ahadith. That this person will be punished in the grave. Now let's understand point by point what we understand from this hadith. Now this is our part of Akita and because it is, this is the simple translation but the, as we say when you uh, ponder on the meaning of the hadith and extract the actual meaning of the text, you will understand. In this, the first point is the kafir and the munafiq are punished in the graves. Do you have any doubt in that? This is ilmul ghaib. We don't know. But it is ilmul ghaib. And we know Prophet Muhammad will not lie. And these sources from five sources which I am telling you, these are all authentic sources. There is no weak narration. It is agreed by all the scholars of hadith. So this hadith confirms that the munafiq and kafir will be punished in the grave. Also, the, we learn from here that there are two angels, they are given the duties. What is the duty for them? Asking the questions and if they don't, knock them out. Okay, this is the, you know, duties of the... Another point in this is, that the, what is the reason? What is the reason? Is the reason is that they were calling themselves either the knowledgeable people of the believer or they were monarchic but they didn't know the knowledge of the religion. Now my sincere question to all of you, how many of us are really serious about our religion? How many of us are really serious about our religion? How many of us really put efforts to learn our religion. If he is teaching, he has done his job. You are learning, you have done your job. Nothing for him, nothing for you. You both will not help each other. He will give his answer, you will give your answer. But what is happening today here? If we don't know our deen, I'll tell you, go to Mishkat, Kitabul Janais, and Adab al Qabr, the whole chapter is there. It says, that the one who was a practicing person, okay, practicing person based on the true knowledge of Islam. Now we are spending our time with mobiles, we are spending our time in Google, we are spending our time here and there. 
But we do. We are not serious about seeking knowledge for ourselves to know, you know, what is right and wrong. Such kind of people, Subhanallah, he says in the Hadith, when this person will be, even if a person may be from China or Amazon Valley, he doesn't know Arabic. But if he, if he was practicing Muslim, Quran in Surah Ibrahim, make a note of that. Quran Surah Ibrahim verse 27, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, يُثَبِتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرِ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps the person firm. The sincere believers of Allah, the true believers of Allah, the people who know the meaning of Iman, the people who know the meaning of Islam, the people who have understood the six pillars of Iman, the people who have understood the five pillars of Islam. These people were, even if they can be any from any part of the world, Arab or Ajab, doesn't matter. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ ثَابِتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep them firm with their statement of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah in the grave في الدنيا وفي الآخرة In dunya means they are alive and they are practicing the deen and في الآخرة it refers to the tafsir according to the tafsir of the Mufassirin Akhirah here does not mean the Qiyamah. Akhirah means in the grave, grave when the angels will be asking him the question. And the person may be professor in English Arabic school, maybe a lecturer, a senior lecturer, or maybe you know he has done his PhD in Arabic. His first language could be Arabic. He may be as good as Allah Akbar in Arabic poetry, but he was not upon the Deen. Then the Hadith in Mishkati says. His statement will be, he will be stammering. He will be stammering when the question will be asked. And Arab, if he was not upon the deen, he will be stammering on the day of, in the grave and he will say, Ah, ah, la adri. Ha, ha, la adri. That I don't know. Though he may be an Arab, as I said, but he will not be able to say these answers in the grave because of his lack of knowledge and proper practicing of the deen. So before we become nasheed artist, before we become shair, before we become singers, before we become qari, it is important for us to know our deen and we should get ready to prepare for that. Otherwise, whatever we are doing in this dunya, it will not help us to answer these three questions in the grave. Not only that, after that it will be said to him, Prophet's picture will be given to him, shown to him. And he will not be able to recognize him. Why? Because he was, Rasul was not his role model. His hairstyle was of someone else. His face was of someone else. His dress was of someone else. His lifestyle was someone else. So how will he be able to recognize? There's a hadith which says in Mishkat that Prophet's face will be shown to him. And he will not be able to recognize him. And then, the punishment will be so severe. First thing that you, you heard that Rasulullah has said that the screaming will be so loud that every creature of the face of the earth will uh, hear him, but the angel and the insan and jinn will not be able to hear that. And the reason is, Prophet said, I would have made dua to Allah to make you hear the punishment, the you know, screaming of the person in the grave. But I'm not doing it because I know you won't bury your people in the grave then. So it is that severe. And this is the truth, my brothers and sisters, because I'm going to quote you those two verses of the Quran, you will remember that. The point here is that Allah SWT says that the, the Rasul is saying that a person who was in the grave and he was not practicing the deen, he will not be able to give the answer and he will, his tongue will stammer. And then, 99 scorpions and 99 pythons with double fear, double heads. They will start biting him. One of the, one of the groups of the uh, uh, snakes will be from his forehead. They will come and start biting him, biting him, biting him, and they'll stop at his belly. Then other kind of insects, those scorpions will be start biting his feet, and they will come and stop at his belly. And they will keep on biting him. And Rasul has said about the poison. This is all in Mishkat, you'll read it inshallah. 
Rasulullah has said that even one drop of the poison, if it is uh, dropped in the cultivated land where you get, you know, crops, if one drop of that poison is dropped into that cultivated land, it will damage the land that it will never ever grow any crops afterwards. That kind of a poisonous snakes and uh, scorpions will be there. Not only that, today we walk in the street. Don't walk on the street with pride. And we walk. If we have got a good chest and very strong biceps and triceps and good shape in the, you know, wings, we walk with the pride in the street. Sometimes we are coming on the YouTube wearing short t-shirt to show, show that we are, you know, very strong and we have got good build. Jokers coming on to YouTube, subhanAllah. What that will help, help them in the grid? It will be said to them, this kind of people who are walking with pride, in the grave, subhanAllah, they will not be able to show off. Hadith says, one side of the uh, ribs will collapse with the other side of the ribs because Allah will ask the grave to squeeze him. This is the Hadith in Mishkat. And this is in the life of Barzakh. That those people who were not practicing the deen, Allah will tell them, so please, when you're walking in the street, be careful, all the things around you, don't kick them like this, don't break the properties of others, don't damage this, because the earth is waiting for us. Another hadith says, that when a person is having sexual relationship, illegal sexual relationship with the opposite sex. The earth is cursing him. And earth is saying, wait, I wish that Allah give me the power that I open up and pull you alive inside me and I'll squeeze you. This is the punishment of the person who is doing zina. And today zina has become very common, normal, whether we are you know, in the school or high, high school or college or uni or we are just in our, you know, anywhere in there. The people are proud of that. Oh yeah, last night I was enjoying. I did this and I did that. This is how the people are. But they don't know that this will happen to the person in the grave, in the barzakh, lahm of barzakh, that the right side of the ribs will be collapsed and will be squeezed from the left side and it will become one part. The whole, both the ribs will become one rib because Allah will give the command for the grave to squeeze him. And then the Quran says, I'll read the ayat inshallah. The Quran says that every morning and every evening the hellfire will be shown to these people. As I said, when the time when the soul is coming out of the pious person, how the angels are greeting them? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. And what's the glad tiding? Udkhulu jannah. Yes? Here Allah is saying in the Quran that day and night, morning and evening, Allah will show them the hellfire which is a reminder, permanent reminder that your final destination will be And see Allah's mercy, Allah is saying that the angel will show this bad man as well. Look, Allah has made, made this you know, place for you in the Jannah. This is the chair for you. But because you were you know, ungrateful to Allah, it has automatically been changed too because Allah will not do injustice. You get what you deserve. You get what you deserve. So this is the justice of Allah that you deserve this and that's why you are going to the hell. Now these things are happening to those people and subhanAllah, why I brought this thing first is to tell you that we, today, we are not serious about our thing. Even those brothers who are serious about the deen, they are not good to their parents. They are not good to their wives. They are not good to their husbands. They are not good to their children. They are not good to their brothers and sisters. They are they're only good in their namaz. They are only good in their appearance. Their language is also not a language of a pious person. They don't even fear Allah SWT that this word that comes out of their mouth, if it is dropped into the ocean, the whole ocean will be polluted. They don't care for that. And that's the reason we have to be aware of this. And may Allah reward brother Najib and the brother who is arranging this talk. 
that this life of Bazar is not that simple. People think, Margya Chalo, no problem. No, this is a different life. This is a different life and this life of Bazar is a proper life that we will be spending there, the time, and everything will be normal to us, but not to like the dunya. Like a person is in the grave, he will be alive. Normal, alive person, he will be suffering the pain and he will be enjoying the rewards as well. Now let's see, go to the ayat and ahadith. Pay attention, mashallah. The verse which I said, two verses of Surah Al Mumino. Again, number 99 and 100. Who said that? MashaAllah. Good. But you won't get it now. The, the, the offer was expired. حتى إذا جاء أحدهم الموت قال رب ارجعون when the death the time of death has come to them they will say Allah sent me back لعلي عمل صالحا so that I will do good deeds في ما تركت the things that the list which I made I want to you know complete them I am repenting Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم كلا إنها كلمة هو قائلها no this is his words from his mouth He's just saying it from his mouth. It is not, he's not serious about it in his heart. وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِمْ بَرْزَخٌ And the barzakh life is waiting for him. Allah. The barzakh life is? This is the Quran. So we can't deny this. People, they say, we don't know what happens after the grave. It's a bit dead, okay. Apna jalo the life. So they, it says that they, you know, the people, they say, the, who knows what happening? What is happening? This is Molvi who is scaring us. Today, there are people on YouTube, they call themselves Muftis, and they come and they say nothing. No, there is no life of Barzakh. There is no punishment, there is nothing in the grave. These are all, you know, stories made by the Muslim Molvis. They scare you. Can they deny this ayah? This is the ayah from the Quran. And check anybody, if there is any Arab here, I don't know any Arab here. You can read this ayah. It says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time when the soul is coming out of this person, He is saying, no, no, Allah, you don't give me the chance so that I can do something. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, no, this is the word that you are just uttering from your mouth. It is not coming out of your heart. And then Allah is saying, Barzakh is waiting for you. So life of Barzakh is there. And this situation will be ila yawm yub'athun. And this situation will remain till the day of judgment. So if a person died maybe, you know, 10 years before the Jahan uh, Qiyamah, then that 10 years will be his life of Barzakh. If a few people have died like centuries ago, that period of that life will be in the life of Barzakh till the Day of Judgment. So there is no limit to that. The day where a person's body is, soul is gone from this world and departed to the life of Barzakh, then they have to stay there in the day of life of Barzakh. Is the king getting the punishment in the Barzakh? Yes. In Surah Al Ghafir, make a note of this. Page, uh, verse 40, uh, Surah 40, and the verse 45 and 46. فَوَقَهُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِ مَا مَكَرُوا وَحَاقَ بِآلِ فِرْعَوْنَ سُوءُ الْعَذَابِ النَّارُ يُعْرَضُونَ عَلَيْهَا غُضُوًا وَعَشِيًّا وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةِ now this is the ayah which confirms that even those disbelievers in the past and the biggest disbeliever we know from our history is Fir'aun and those who were following Fir'aun. Allah SWT is talking in this Surah Al-Ghafir and in this Surah Al-Ghafir chapter 40 verses 45 and 46 Allah SWT is saying that the children of Fir'aun and Fir'aun, all of them every day, morning and evening, Allah SWT is punishing them in the you know, grave and Allah is showing them the hellfire. See, it says, النَّارُ يُعْرَضُونَ عَلَيْهَا This, the children of uh, Fir'aun and Fir'aun, Allah SWT is showing the fire to them. غُدُوًا وَعْشِيًّا And it is shown day and night. Allahu Akbar. Morning and evening. And this is kind of all ongoing till the day of judgment, till the day of the camera will establish. 
And it will be said to them on the day of judgment, Udkhuru ala Fir'aun ashad al-adab. Throw these children of Ad Fir'aun into the painful and strong punishment. So this is the dalil that every day, 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 morning and evening, Allah will show them the punishment of the hellfire. I'm quoting from the Quran, so these people cannot deny that. Also, similar verse is mentioned. وَمِمَّا خَطِيْآتِهِمْ أُغْرِقُوا فَأُدْخِلُوا نَارًا فَلَمْ يَجِدُوا لَهُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنصَارًا The history of Nuh alayhi salam. The history of Nuh alayhi salam, the tenth generation of Adam's children alayhi salatu salam. Tenth generation are the you know, children of Nuh alayhi salam. وَالْسُعَى يَغُوثِ عُوْقَ النَّاسِ They were the tenth generation of Nuh alayhi salam. That means the history of the mankind. That old history. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying when they were drowned. What happened to them? They were drowned in the flood, yes? <coughs> the people who denied who knew Hale Salaam, they wanted to kill him. They were drowned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Immediately after they were drowned, they were put into the barzakh. And that barzakh is referring here as nar. See, because the word is fa. In Arabic grammar it says, Mimma khatiyatihim ughriku. Because of their bad deeds, they were drowned. And immediately they were sent into the hellfire. So the, uh, sending the hellfire, it will be in the, the day of judgment. But what does it mean here? Barzakh. What does it mean here? Barzakh, alhamdulillah. And this is not my tafsir, you can check by your tafsir of any scholar. <laughs> and for such people, they will not find any sort of help from anybody. Okay, now the glad tidings for the believers. Alhamdulillah. So the first time I scared you with, I said, hold your hearts. Now the beautiful things for all of us. A brother before the Maghrib prayer, he told me that, Sheikh Sahib, please tell us the good signs of the people dying. And Rasul Sallallahu has said, he always he used to make the dua, that Allah give us, you know, good ending. Bless us with good ending. Okay. Now this is without any expiry date of the offer. One ayah of the Quran which Rasul Sallallahu used to read always in his khutbahs, all the khutbahs, and that ayah says something about life and death as Muslim. I'll count ten counts. And by that, if you don't give the answer, finish. <laughs> ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, What? Well, well um, it's, it's Allah and His Allah and His angels give signs to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So those believers also give signs to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. This is the ayah subhanallah. Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to read in all his speeches. That O oh, you who believe Believe in Allah, fear Allah as He should be feared. Daru Allah said, Jesse Allah ka hake, darneka. Wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun and don't die but as Muslims. And here Muslim is not la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, just the paddle paddle paddle, no. Submissive. Means your death should be in a sense where you will be tayyibin. Where you will be? Tayyibin, when the, your soul is coming out at that time, you are pure. When your soul is coming at that time, you have submitted your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That can come any time. And that kind of a death is a glad tidings. Look, the signs. These are so all in the hadith, okay? If you want, inshallah, as I told you, you can go to <coughs> Mishkat and you'll find. The believer, when he is dying, Allah has promised in Surah Ibrahim. Allah has promised him. 
Surah Ibrahim, verse 27, that Allah keeps him firm in this dunya and Allah will keep him firm in the grave with his iman. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ibrahim, Allah has given the example of a good Muslim, like a beautiful tree whose roots are rooted inside the earth and his fruits are beneficial to the ummah outside the earth. That's the example of a believer. And this believer when he dies, Rasul has shown, the, uh, you know, so many signs that he will be happy. Man ahabba liqa Allahi ahabba liqa Anybody who loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. So this is the sign of a face of a person when he is ready for dying. And beautiful example of in the story of Musa, Firaun and the magicians. Can you recall it? Again. <laughs> Come on, the offer is going. I have to take this book to my house then. <laughs> Beautiful example. Again, three, three people are mentioned in the story. I have already given you the hint. Musa, Salam, Firaun and the magicians. And Allah speaks about the magicians. And Allah speaks about Firaun. Allah speaks about Musa, Salam. And Allah speaks about the people who are willing to meet Allah. See, all four hints are given. What's the question? <laughs> Mention it. Explain. Explain it. What's the main point in that? It revolves around these four. My, I quote the hadith that Allah loves to meet you, the one who meet, want to meet Allah. And said he was wrong. And the, the magicians, they made sujood uh, after Musa's um, uh, snake had eaten that snake. And then uh, Pharaoh said, and you have believed before, I have given you permission to believe. What did they say? They said, then you control us in this dunya. But, um, you got it. 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 I'll explain. I'll explain. Beautiful thing. You know when, when the magicians were defeated, <coughs> so they understood, clever magicians, they became Muslims, they repented to Allah. And they said, they openly in public, they declared that we believe in the Lord of Musa and Harun. So Fir'aun told them that you and Musa, both of you have, all of you have, you know, planned this. And Musa is the Kabirukum, he is the biggest of yours. Planner, and I'm, if you don't come back to my deen again, I'm going to cut you into two pieces, right and left. Your right arm and le left leg, and your left arm and your right leg. So what the magician said? Do, you do. do whatever you want to do. We are ready to meet our... No. The words are there. We are ready to meet? No. Ah, so this is the example that if you want to meet Allah, Allah wants to meet you too. And this is what it says. This is a good sign of a person dying. When a person is dying, and when you see he's smiling or she's smiling, when you see a person is dying, and the good sign is there that the person dies in his wudu, or she dies in his wudu, a person dies in the sajda, a person dies in the while he's fasting or she's fasting, a person is practicing and that person dies with smiling face and there is impression on the face. Subhanallah, you don't know. They see the angels and they're smiling. They are waiting, they are saying, there is a hadith of Rasulullah in Sahih Bukhari. The dead body says, take me, take me, take me to the grave. And Rasulullah has said that if this body is good, go, don't be the barrier between him and the reward of Allah. Take him and bury this body quickly. And we are sending our body to Pakistan and Bangladesh. Okay? And delaying that. But subhanAllah, hadith says, no. And if he is bad body, a person, the body of a bad person, Get rid of it as soon as possible. Don't carry the you know, burden of the sin of this person. And Rasul has said that don't be the barrier for the good that is there for him. So this is, these are the examples of a good person dying, subhanAllah. And when he is dying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say that the grave is only this big. Maybe the you know, one body can be fixed in it. And when the person dies and he is buried, when the people move away, Allah sends the angel. Even though the angels are horrifying angels in their appearance, 
But this person will not be scared of them. If this person will be sitting with smiling face and with willingness, though he may be not be able to speak Arabic, a single word of Arabic in this dunya, but he was a practicing Muslim, he will willingly, happily, easily, he will give the answer of those questions. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show him the place in the Jannah. And every day, morning and evening, the Jannah will be shown. And one window will be open for him. And he will be getting the breeze coming out of the Jannah every day, morning and evening. And you know from the, the Shaheed, what did Allah say? وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَنْ يُغْتَلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَالِ In Surah Al-Baqarah, in Surah the, the, Nisa, it says, يُرْزَقُونَ They are fed in the Jannah. But not in the Jannah, but in the Barzakh. They are enjoying the life in the Barzakh. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the earth that expands for him. And then it is said in the Hadith, نَمْ كَنَوْمُ الْعَرُوسِ Sleep like a bride is sleeping. In the first night, and who is the most beloved to the bride on the first night? No, not, not for the book. I can't give you the book now for this. Everybody knows. The groom is the best person to her. Yes or no? Nobody will disturb her at that particular night. Only her husband will go to her and disturb her. Yes or no? This is the word. These are the words of Rasulullah that Allah, the angel will say, Namka Namatil Arus. Sleep on your back now in the Jannah and sleep in such a peaceful manner that nobody will disturb you. The way the bride is not disturbed except her husband, the same thing, the most beloved to you is Allah and Allah will wake you up on the day of death. This is the reward for the person. Abdullah bin Abbas is saying that when you see your dead people in your dream, it's your soul when it, is, it has come out of your body and you see your dead people and they are smiling and laughing. This is the good sign that they are in peace because your soul can meet the soul of the dead people. So the souls can meet, not you in personally. You know those uh, charms and those witches, they invite their souls and they want you to talk to them. This is all rubbish. This is nothing. They all are shaitan. They invite shaitan to talk to them. But in real life, Abdullah bin Abbas confirms that when you sleep, your soul comes out. And your soul, in your dream, you see maybe your mother who died, she is laughing and smiling at you or giving you some good advice. This is because your soul meant her soul. So these are the good signs of the, those people who are <coughs> pious in this dunya. So Allah keeps them firm. And till the day of judgment, they will be fed. And every time, Abdullah bin Abbas is saying that every time they are being given the good news about their family as well. So don't worry about your family. Everybody is, Allah is looking after them. These are the people in the life of the Barzakh. And that will remain till the day of judgment. And inshallah, next time when inshallah he arranges the talk, then what will happen after we get up from the grave till we go to the Jannah and Jahannam, that will be, inshallah, more descriptions to that. Now, inshallah, you can have any questions that you want to ask. Wa akhir da'wan, alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin. Going to the grave, for the, especially for the parents. So, like, we are here, or if the parents are buried in Pakistan. So, uh, regarding benefits to the deceased, so, Definitely, we pray for them in, in our du'as here. So, would it be more better if we go there and pray on the grave? So, is there any difference if we pray for them here or going to the graves? You are praying to Allah. Praying to Allah. And Allah is everywhere. Yeah. So, your prayers can reach anywhere from any place, inshallah. Yeah. Doesn't matter, you don't have to travel, inshallah. If, if you see any and any good person in a dream and he's talking to you, come on brother, it's a nice place. He is, he is in a person. I mean, yes, if, according to Abdullah bin Abbas, in his uh, tafsir of Ibn series, the dream, book of dreams, he says that you have to now prepare yourself for it. Because Allah wants to invite you. So you have to prepare now. And don't do, don't leave any good deeds as impending. Believe me, look for the opportunity. Look, like I said even yesterday in my uh, live show, <clears throat> my son he came from his job, like six seven o'clock, and he was tired. 
He came to my house. He lives in, in his own house, but I just came to see my wife. And my wife was waiting for him, list of shopping things, and she wanted to go with him. And he said, Abu, I have, I'm doing duties there, I have to do duty of your mom and your wife as well. Mom, she has come up. I said, you are lucky, man. You are lucky. If I had my mom and dad alive, I would have never said this. I'm looking such opportunities to, you know, serve my parents. You are lucky, man. Your mom is asking you something. I'm there for her. She could have asked me. But you are lucky Allah has given you an opportunity that you can, mashallah, you know, ask your, uh, your mom is asking you to go, go with her, mashallah. And he was so happy. All time has gone. <laughs> okay, alhamdulillah. So, Ji. Uh, Sheikh, what du'as can we do to try and uh, attain a good end? And what can we do to ensure that we... Subhanallah. Okay, the brother is saying that what do I we have to do to keep us like our iman boosting all the time and keeping us reminding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best dua is that how much we are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first thing. Because Rasul sallallahu has given us the criteria. <laughs> if it comes to the family, he said that the best among you who is the good to his family and I'm best to and I'm good to my family. This is with regards to the family. So you have to see. And the another hadith of Rasulullah. <coughs> now how many of you are sleeping now? Nobody will say because they all are awake. Yes? All of you are fresh? Yes. Look what Rasulullah said. Mashallah may Allah reward him. This is a good question he asked. Rasulullah has said, La yu'minu ahadukum. La yu'minu ahadukum. Nobody can be a true believer. Now pay attention. Nobody can be a true believer. La yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsi. You cannot be a true believer unless you love for others what you love for yourself. Now you want anybody to abuse you. You want anybody to insult you. You want anybody to lie to you. You want anybody to cheat you. No. So then the criteria of your Iman is that all the time you put yourself into the shoe of the other person before you do any harm to him. That's the best goodness. That's the best goodness. Rasul was asked, Ya Rasulullah, how can I achieve Allah's love? How can I achieve Allah's love? Rasul Sallallahu said that keep yourself Give the least priority to the dunya, Allah will love you. And he said, how can I achieve the love of the people? Again, this is one of the hadiths of 40 hadiths of Imam Nawawi. With more details will come inshallah in my videos. But see the hadith. The question is, how can I achieve Allah's love? In other words, how can I be you know, successful and beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Rasulullah said, give the least priority to the Dunya, Allah will love you. And he said that how can I achieve the love of the people? Then Rasulullah said, don't bother, don't you know, bother into their wealth. Don't go, don't talk about their wealth and don't think about people's property. People will love you. Another hadith of Rasulullah that the, a Muslim is always conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In what sense? That when you are using your eyes, you should put yourself into a position that if somebody looks with his or her eyes, what you will be expecting from that person. When you are talking, what you are expecting somebody else to, you know, while he is talking to you. All these are the good qualities. And the best thing is, Rasulullah said that make the zikr of Allah. Keep your tongue always wet with La ilaha illallah. Always ask Allah's forgiveness. Always ask Allah's forgiveness. Like for example, a man, he committed 99 murders. Ek do bhi nahi. 99. But he realized what he did. First is realization. Repentance does not come, you know, uh, first. First is, you have to realize what is right and what is wrong. This man, he realized that I have committed sin, now it is time for me to stop. But he was, he lost his hope in Allah. 
So what he did? He went to the Mulvis, the Jewish scholars, rabbis. They started making joke of him. एक कत्ल पे समझ नहीं आए, दो पे नहीं आए, 99 कत्ल करके तो बात कर रहा है। You didn't realize when you killed one person. You didn't realize when you killed two people. Now, after 99 people killing 99 people, you're coming for the toba? No toba for you. He got angry and he finished him also. So he completed full century. <laughs> then Subhanallah, because he realized that he was sincere, some people guided him. Then go to that particular land, walk to that particular land. And inshallah you will get the guidance from them. And before you could reach there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his soul. And the angels were fighting. One angel was saying, I'll take him to the Jannah. The other one was saying, no, he has committed hundreds of murders. He'll go to Jahannam. Then third angel was sent. And it was said, measure the distance he walked to the bad land and the good land. And see, this is the mercy of Allah. The land that he walked for the Tawbah, it was stretched. And then the angel who came to take him to the Jannah, he was added to the Jannah. What does this mean? A person's realization is important. Always, you know like for example in India they have a series, but I'm not asking you to see that series, but this is called Sasbi Kabi Bahuti. Okay? Sasbi Kabi Bahuti. Now the mother-in-law and daughter-in-law always they fight. Yes or no? Always there is a problem and the man, poor guy, he is squished here. Now he has to please his mother, he has to please his wife. <laughs> now he's in trouble. Saas bhi kabhi bahuti. Wallahi, if the Saas, see, she will never be, you know, in trouble and her daughter-in-law will never be in trouble if when the, the Bahu is coming, the daughter-in-law is coming into her house, if she treats her the way she wanted to be treated when she went to her in-laws, then there will not be any problem. I repeat again, when the mother-in-law welcomes her daughter-in-law and she treats her the way she wanted to be treated when she went as a daughter-in-law, then there will not be any problem. So this is the best thing in our religion, subhanAllah. Before we talk, we should remember that. Rasulullah said, speak the truth, otherwise keep silent. Do dhikr of Allah. If you are angry while you are standing, sit down. If you are angry while you are sitting, lie down. If you are angry and you are lying down, go and make wudu because anger is from shaitan and the wudu will put that off. These are all remembrance, you know, keep you down. Subhanallah. I, I before my Islam, before my you know, Islam, I was a wild person. All the time fighting, fighting, all the time preparing for the tournament. You know, every time, I, even in my dream, I would think of my opponent and I'm knocking him out. So this was my nature. While walking in the street, I would kick this board. I would kick that board thinking, oh, this is my opponent. Boom, I'm going to knock him. SubhanAllah, I heard one hadith of Rasul Sallallahu <coughs> Rasul Sallallahu said, Mustarih minhu wa mustarih anhu. One janazah was going, and Rasul Sallallahu said, SubhanAllah, now the janaza is in peace, all oh, the people are in peace from him. And then he explained that if this man who died now, if he was disturbed by the people, now after his death he is in peace, nobody will disturb him. And the other one, if he was a bad person giving hard time to everyone, now they will be in peace after his. Death. And I, subhanAllah, I realized that, you know, I'm walking in the street, I'm punching this wall, I'm punching that board, I'm kicking that bed, and subhanAllah, if I die, all the, these creatures will say, Acha, Jan, Chudi, let him die, his good deed is gone. And subhanAllah, since then, I control myself. So this is how you have to realize that Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is watching you. Allah is watching you. And Allah says TV is 24-7. Be conscious of Allah. Put yourself into the shoes of others and see that how you want to be treated. The same way you treat that person and you will be close to Allah SWT. Inshallah. <coughs> Any other questions? Uh, just before the questions, I don't want to take this back home. <laughs> so inshallah, a few questions anybody can answer. Very simple questions. The Sheikh keeps mentioning a book. It's called Mishkat al-Mutabih. 
keeps mentioning it. And he's mentioned a specific chapter, and he must have said it at least 15, 20 times. Yes. What's the name of the chapter? <laughs> or who said it first? <laughs> no, but and with Kitabul Janais, Kitabul Janais is long. There is a specific chapter in Kitabul Janais. <laughs> Somebody has said. Is anybody going to claim that? If not, then this brother. There you go. Yeah, it is Kitabul Janais Adab al Qabar. That's what it's specific. Yeah, that chapter is dealing with all these kind of things. Alhamdulillah. The next question again now, Hans, please. Uh, two explanations or meanings you could say for Barzakh that the Shaykh mentioned. One gives one in the Quran and one gives the other. <laughs> Uh, you will get it, don't worry. Uh, you don't need to give me that, just a minute. One is the barrier and the other is the place in itself where, you, where uh, you're having the experience of being Christian. Sorry, the way where you're there alive. The oh, I, don't know. Was, yeah. I know you've been gone, I'll let you have that, but if you're going to explain that to somebody, you probably get a slap. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, you can have that. Take it, take it, mashallah. Yes. It's more specifically, as the Sheikh mentioned, from the moment yeah. you die, Surah Rahman, Allah speaks about the barrier between two seas. The, the, the barrier stops meeting of the two seas. This is Barzah. And <coughs> Barzah, where in Surah al muminun Surah al muminun chapter 22, verse 99 and 100, where Allah speaks about the Barzah, which is a life waiting for the Kafir. You know, in between, before the, you know, the, from the time of death till the day of judgment, that period. Okay. Next question, and the Sheikh mentioned I would do this, and I am going to do it. The hadith that I mentioned, lengthy hadith, he mentioned the narrator. Who is the narrator of that hadith? Yeah. I'll give this to the uncle behind you, who also said that's it. <laughs> okay, there's the last one here now, and a very, 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 very easy question. Sheikh mentioned three conditions, three things that will give you, you could see you have everything. You have achieved the whole world. You've achieved everything, the whole world. Sincere man, waking up with good health and a lot of reason. Okay, he's doing it for you. There you are. There you go. That was the first one. There you go. Uh, questions again? One second, I will have some uh, upstairs. Okay. Any more questions? Can generic question first, then inshallah we have time. Uh, two questions. Uh, one is, you said that when the, when the people are in the Barzakh, that they are as alive as we are. Um, so, when you visit them, or when they're in the Barzakh, are they aware of what's happening within the world, literally? So, so outside the world. The, outside the world. So, for example, if you were to visit someone's grave, say, and you would be in to Allah, or reciting to Allah, um, and sort of ties in with that is with the Prophet when, you, when we give salam and salutations, to, is it the case with the, where he's in the Barzakh and, and the angels are coming to him, offering those salutations or how does that work? So, the okay. yeah. It's a good question, mashallah. The brother is saying that how is the relation of people in the Barzakh with the relation of the people outside the Barzakh? And he has given the example of Prophet Sallallahu and we are, you know, giving the road and sending the road upon Rasulullah there's a hadith in Sunan ibn Majah where Allah SWT has appointed, it says that Allah SWT has appointed two angels who <coughs> collect all your prayers and du'as and durud for Rasulullah and it is forwarded to Rasulullah when his soul is returned back to his body. So these are the very clear evidence 
And according to the tafsir of Abdullah ibn Abbas, even our dead people, they are also been given good exam, like you know, information and news to the people uh, about, about our life. Because they inquire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because this is an honor to those people, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah, you know, keeps them uh, updated with whatever they are doing. This is the tafsir, this is not the hadith, but this is the tafsir of Abdullah ibn Abbas. General understanding is that their life is, they are alive in the grave, whether Muslims or non-Muslims, but they are not alive the way they were alive with us. Otherwise, Rasulullah when he was buried, if he was alive the same way as we are, so logical reason, pay attention to this, because our Barilmi brothers and Sufi brothers, they always argue with us with Akida point. And I say, see, whatever you believe, I have no problem. It's between you and Allah. But very clear. Now my question is to all of you. What is better for us? Prophet Sallallahu walking around with us in our public to resolve our problems or sitting in the grave, lying in the grave and spending his time. He's still alive but he's lying there. What is better for us? With us, yes? So if we think that is better for us, then Prophet Sallallahu came for the betterment, yes? Then why did he go? Why did he leave us like this? Why did he didn't get up from his grave <coughs> while his body was yet not buried? And Abu Bakr and the other Sahaba were arguing about who will become the Khalifa. That is the first argument between the Sahaba. And it became so furious, so furious that they started, they came out with the sword to each other. So you think that if Rasul was alive the way he was alive uh, in this dunya, then why was he lying there in Aisha's room, Aisha's chamber? And when the Sahaba are ready to kill each other just because of the Khilaf. This is one thing. Second thing, if we really respect Rasul and we believe that he is alive, why did we shroud him? 